All right, we're going to go over how to package and deploy an app using Composer and by also using the snapshot method. And using the snapshot method, we're going to grab all the files that have changed on the boot drive from the time of installation to after you've set and configured the app exactly the way you want. If you want to deploy an app with, let's say, for example, in Google Chrome's case, a home page or settings already set up, this is going to be the way to go about doing that. So. We have our installer here on the desktop. I have the disk image mounted. We're going to first start by taking a snapshot. And you want to do this with as few applications running as possible. That way there's no other file changes that happen. So definitely close your email or any chat clients that might get messages um, during that time. It's also best if you have a non-production machine to go ahead and do this on. Um, or make a virtual machine on your machine where you don't have anything else running at all. That way, you don't risk getting any other cruft in the package when you build it. So first, we'll take our snapshot. And I'm just going to call it Google Chrome. And uh, I went out and found what version I have here. So I'm just going to, I always give them version numbers. So this is the version that I'm packaging here. And we'll just give that its name. And then we'll go next. And what's going to happen now is it's going to take a snapshot All right, now that Composer has finished grabbing its image of what applications are currently installed, we're going to go and we're going to go to our Chrome installer and we'll perform our installation. So I'm just going to drag the Chrome app to the Applications folder. It's going to copy. And now that that's been put there, we'll go to Applications and we'll go ahead and we will uh, launch Chrome. Now, a good rule of thumb is to launch the app three times. So we could say, if we want to set Chrome as our default browser, um, I personally don't, but in your deployment, you might want to have that checked. And we'll say, go ahead and start Google Chrome. And we'll see Chrome launch here. And we maybe we don't want this to come up for each user, so we'll say, no thanks. And we'll close this out, and we'll close this out. I'm going to go to Chrome Preferences, and let's say that we want to always show the Home button, and we always want to show the Bookmark bar. Want to make sure, yep, these are the extensions we want to deploy. And we'll uh, change what our new tab is. You know, we could say open on whatever page it is. I'm just going to say open on new tab as regular. Can look in advanced settings and make sure that's what we want. We could say, yep, we want to have it ask where we want to save each file. Just take it back to the home page here. And I'm just going to close Chrome. So now that we've launched it again, it's going to ask, you know, do we want this to be our default? If we did, yes. Otherwise, I'll say don't ask again. To set that preference in the file, we'll close Chrome and we'll Go ahead and we'll launch Chrome one more time just to make sure it's set exactly how we want it. And it looks like, yep, that's how we want it to go out to our users. So we'll say close Chrome. And now that we've configured the app exactly how we want it, we'll go and say create package source. And it's going to take that after snapshot of what the boot disk looks like. All right, now that Composer's done taking that after snapshot, it shows us what files it has grabbed. I'm just going to do an exploded view of them all here. So in applications, we have the Google Chrome app. And this would work just the same as if we were to drag the app into our sources and just package the app. So that's good to go. But what it also grabbed was files that have changed in my user profile. So we'll see that it also grabbed the library application support, Google, all the preferences it say to have it, the application state, and all the localized data. Now, you want to make sure that you go through and remove whatever cruft there is. So I know I don't need to deploy that out to my users. And I know that my users can go and get the Chrome apps however they want it. So I'm actually going to delete that out. And uh, I could have actually just deleted the entire upper directory there. We'll just delete that out. Yeah. But I 
also want to make sure so application save state that's for if you're resuming your Mac from sleep or if you have it on reboot to restore Windows we don't need that we're just gonna delete that but the rest of the content here these are all of the preferences that we set so for example we set the settings for opening on a new tab or making it show the home button or what the home page was this is where you'd go in and, and this was the files that have those settings so we'll be deploying those out to our users now I'm just checking here we also have the shared file list the recent documents that just is the recent documents for the menu bar we don't need that we're gonna get rid of that and so we've got pretty much everything that's gonna be required for Chrome to have our settings we'll just package that up. We're going to want to do this as a disk image. By doing this as a disk image, when we, and we'll just save it to the desktop here, when we deploy this to our users using the Casper suite, using a policy, we'll want to check fill user templates. And by filling the user template, what's going to do is any user that logs in after that point, it's going to fill in what those settings are. So the home page or whatever you may have set. There's also going to be a checkbox where you could say in the policy to fill existing user templates. I need to be careful with that because what that's going to do is it's going to fill all the home directories on a Mac. So if a Mac's been out in the field for a couple months or maybe a year, a user might already have bookmarks configured and it's going to erase their bookmarks and fill them with these. So if you're deploying Macs that are brand new in those scenarios, it should be fine. If you're deploying to Macs that have already existed, you're going to want to just be very careful with that fill user template um, and fill existing user templates so it doesn't wipe out whatever your existing users have already on file.